Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Brindle, Managing Director, APAC EMEA Tax and Accounting. Well, good morning and welcome to Synergy 2014. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us. I'm really excited to be here, as I know we have a really great schedule for you throughout the day. Today's Synergy is part of a global series of uh, customer sessions that we are uh, running around the world uh, in Brazil, the US, uh, this week in London and next week uh, in my hometown in, uh, in Australia. So here today in this room we have representatives of over 150 customers and partners and I know many of you are repeat attendees at this, at this session and I look forward to meeting many of you throughout the day. I recently moved into this role which covers our tax and accounting operations in Europe as well as Australia and, and Asia and that follows Charlotte Rushton's recent move uh, back to the United States to manage one of our legal businesses uh, within Thomson Reuters. I'm not however new to uh, tax or tax technology. Before joining Thomson Reuters I was with PwC for 16 years and was a partner in tax, doing tax compliance, tax consulting. Uh, in various locations, including a few years here in London. Uh, and I also headed up the Australian firm's build out of its tax software business that was ultimately acquired by, by Thomson Reuters. Uh, since then, joining seven years ago, I've been managing our Australian and New Zealand operations. And in that role, I had, uh, had focused on the full range of tax and accounting solutions that we offer into multinational companies, professional firms and government, covering our one source product suite but also our other product lines such as Checkpoint, uh, our suite of research materials and tax commentary that we have uh, in various parts of the world. So I'm really looking forward to bringing my experience to the UK customer base here and to our UK team uh, as well as we continue to deliver best of breed tax and accounting solutions to both our local and domestic UK businesses, uh, our Ireland and Netherlands customers, as well as, as well as multinationals customers across the region and, and globally. Having a role that covers such a, a wide geography does come with its challenges. For instance, on Saturday I was at Twickenham with a few people in this room to watch England play the New Zealand All Blacks. And I think it's the first time that I've attended a game where I've had to choose between England and New Zealand. On the one hand, as an Aussie, it's always good to see the motherland England fail in her sporting endeavours. And for me, it never got boring during the Ashes campaign of, campaigns of 1989 right through to 2003. And notwithstanding personally being at Edgebaston on, on the day England beat Australia on the first test of the 97 tour. Of course, we went on one every other test in that series. But I do feel a deep connection with England perhaps because I am uh, a direct descendant of an English convict sent to the penal col colony that is now, that is now Australia uh, for a crime, not for stealing a loaf of bread, but in fact as an accountant convicted of theft and fraud. <laughs> so when I was studying for my chartered accounting exams, uh, quite a few years ago now, I did wonder how my great, great, many, many times over, great grandfather would have answered some of the ethics questions in the exam. And certainly there were no uh, accounting software controls in place uh, way, way back then. On the other hand, New Zealand is really just a, a holiday island a few hours east of Australia, a great place to ski, some nice countryside, some great Sauvignon Blanc. And frankly, it's hard to accept that New Zealand can be good at any sport that doesn't involve hobbits and orcs. <laughs> so I know some of the people with me at the game are really looking forward to, see, to seeing and hearing the All Blacks uh, perform their haka, the tribal war dance that they do be before, before every game. Um, but of course we should have realised that that was going to be drowned out by the wails of swing low, sweet chariot from the English supporters. So I did stay neutral. Uh, deep down I was hoping for, you know, to see the crowd adulation and excitement of an English win. Unfortunately it wasn't, wasn't to be. So this morning I was woken by the sleep cycle on my iPhone. 
after a, a quick perusal of the news on my favourite apps, including the Reuters News app, of course, I put a FaceTime call in uh, to, my, to my family back in Melbourne. FaceTime is my preferred uh, video conferencing mechanism because of the seamless ecosystem that, that, that Apple delivers. I will use Skype, however, to communicate with my dad who, who lives in Thailand. So during our FaceTime conversation with the family, I pointed the kids to our online Flickr account where I'd uploaded some photos I'd taken of the Christmas decorations at Covent Garden over the weekend. And for my kids, 11-year-old twins, they don't really know any different to such an extensive and sometimes invasive use of technology. iPads are compulsory for them in, in grade five at school. A lot of their homework, a lot of their uh, projects are done uh, on their iPads. My wife checks their schedules, signs off their homework all online. I'm not an avid Facebook user, but I, I am part of a private group with my former MBA cohort. It is our primary mechanism for keeping in touch and we're working on our plans for a, a, a Christmas get together. So I liked a few suggestions on our, on our Facebook page and then accepted a few LinkedIn connection uh, invitations that had, that had come in overnight and was nearly ready to start the work day. So shortly after I collected my pre-ordered coffee utilising a QR code uh, at a London cafe near the hotel where I'm staying, I used Halo to order a taxi to get me to the office for a quick video conference with some of my colleagues back in Australia who were working late. Uh, and en route, I, I proved a bunch of uh, work expense, expense authorizations using my iPad. And finally, on arriving here at the venue, I checked our Convene app to remind me of today's schedule. And that was all before 8.30. So I couldn't imagine having done all of those activities in the past without the assistance of technology. In fact, I don't remember really a day where I didn't utilise technology in order to be more efficient and to manage a global schedule. So technology is part of my life and yours, I'm sure, both personally and professionally. So today's program is built around our theme, where tax and accounting meet technology. It's about realising efficiencies within your everyday tax and accounting processes, driving initiatives to do more with less, leveraging enterprise data systems for the reuse of existing data and spending more time on value-add activities and risk management. And technology is a key partner to help you achieve this and that's why we are here today. I'd like to make special mention of a few people joining us today. I'm delighted that we're joined here by Brian Peccarelli, President of the Tax and Accounting Business at Thomson Reuters. Many of you will have met Brian uh, at previous Synergy events, and I know he's looking forward to meeting many of you throughout the day. Also here we have a range of industry experts and, and leaders providing us with thought-provoking discussions around emerging trends, changes in regulatory requirements and best practice examples that will help you gain better efficiencies from your tax and accounting departments. Our guest presenters today are here from Ernst & Young, KPMG, Deloitte, Grant Thornton, BDO and Advanced Tax Solutions. I'm also delighted that we have several of our customers here as well, including B Sky B, Acorn, Baker Hughes and our own local UK Thomson Reuters tax team who are going to be sharing their, their own tax transformation stories for the first time at our London Synergy event. So I think we have a significant amount of tax and accounting brain power in this room today and so I challenge you all to, to make the most of that, take advantage of it, network with these leaders and, and hopefully take, take a few um, uh, learnings back to the office for your day-to-day for your, uh, -day practice. We are adopting our own use of technology at, at today's Synergy. So to help you navigate through the day, to provide feedback and to network with your fellow tax and accounting professionals, we're using the Convene mobile app. You should have hopefully received an email with details on how to activate it. Hopefully most of you have now activated it. There are um, instructions in your delegate pack and the uh, team out at the registration desk can help you throughout the day if you need any help. In a few moments, I will be asking some live polling questions. So, so please go to the keynote presentation session 
on the event schedule and you'll see a graph tab or a poll button depending on what type of advice, uh, device that you're using so that you can vote. So this is one of those times where it's not rude to pull out your uh, uh, mobile or tablet device. It's been a turbulent year in the world of tax and accounting as the pace of regulation continues unabated. There's the OECD's BEPS project attempts to apply a global standard to the way corporations and tax authorities report. FATCA is now live. Bitcoin, the, the world's first global digital currency, left governments, regulators and vendors scratching their heads about the tax implications. The EU is clamping down on the Irish corporate tax regime. US Treasury are taking action on inversions. There are new EU regulations like the 2015 VAT supply of supply rules. And we have the upcoming FRS 102, uh, 101 and 102 rollout in the UK. Tax authorities, including HMRC, are committing to a greater use of technology in managing tax and auditing firms. And the G20 leaders are meeting in Brisbane shortly to discuss, among other things, the global response to BEPS. And these recent highlight, uh, headlines demonstrate how complicated and connected the global economy has become. The pressure to keep up with this global digital economy is affecting us all. And tax has become one of the hottest issues for business around the globe. And these issues are impacting you. Globalisation is changing the way we all work. Traditional business models are being disrupted from technology disruptor businesses. The accelerated globalisation of business is creating opportunities for innovative and, and agile companies. Businesses are going through global finance transformations, moving work to shared service centres, and many tax teams are having to centralise and work together around the world. You live and work in a global environment wherever you sit and whatever you do day to day. The tax the, this change impacts tax departments, stretching resources, changing processes, demanding that you think differently on how you will service your key stakeholders, the board and senior management, shareholders, lenders, regulators, customers, your PR department and the media for that matter. So we have our first polling question. If you could get your mobile devices uh, ready. Uh, in a moment you'll see this question on your Convene app. This is not for TR staff to, to uh, participate in, by the way. So you should hopefully now see uh, the question in your, in your Convene app, what is your main focus in your organisation's tax and accounting department? Is it local, domestic, regional or global? So still a bit of movement there, there happening, but, but very clearly Oh, there's a few local domestic coming in, but, but very clearly everyone here, or well, the majority of people here, uh, have, have a global role to play in managing your organisation's tax and accounting department, so clearly no, no surprises there. So how are attack tax departments adopting technology to help face these challenges? Based on EY's recent global survey on managing operational tax risk, it's a mixed bag. With some companies rapidly adopting tax technology solutions, but, but many still risk being left behind. The survey showed that nearly 80% of companies report that the complexity of tax regulation is increasing risk in their organisations. Uh, probably no surprise there. And 57% uh, reported that a lack of technology is playing a major contributor to risk. In other parts of the world, that is even higher. So in the Asia-Pacific region, for example, that goes up to 69%. Most tax departments had been subject to a tax audit by the tax authorities in the last three years, and nearly half reported that they have little or no tax, uh, tax technology to help support those types of audits. And nearly three quarters of tax departments have no tools or, no, or, or only use spreadsheets to manage their tax data. So if you're interested in finding out more about uh, this survey and, and uh, the analysis, you can pick up your copy 
of the report at the EY booth outside uh, and Anthony Davis from EY is presenting on managing operational tax risk later this afternoon. So there's no doubt that technology with, the with a focused application by tax and accounting professionals is driving a force of change. Not only has it changed the way you currently work but continues to open up the transparency of the tax and accounting function at, at the board level, the government authorities, investors, as well as the general public. So clearly the work that you do is more important than ever. It's critical to the success of your organisations, but have your processes and operations evolved to keep up? And what does the future of tax and accounting management look like? So let's go to the second polling, polling question. Should be now appearing on your on your mobile device. Simple yes, no. Does your organisation have a tax and accounting technology strategy? So it's moving around a bit, but around 70 to 75 per cent are, are saying that uh, their organisation does does have one. Uh, and, and if the, the minority are saying that they, that they don't. So th those findings are, are pleasing. We're all on a journey to modernise our tax and accounting organisation. And just as business as a whole is largely driven by new technologies and the digital culture, so is tax and accounting. I've seen leading tax and accounting departments transform their functions by building out a tax and accounting technology strategy. And as found in the recent PwC survey, a tax technology strategy defines the tax department's entire technology plan, starting with system integration and design, continuing with software product selection, implementation and utilisation, and extending to longer term product upgrade and product maintenance. As identified in the PwC survey, there are many benefit uh, there are many benefits association with with having a solid found foundation, a solid tax technology strategy, including allowing professionals to better focus their resources on analysing data and adding value, rather than just gathering data. It enables tax and accounting functions to more effectively evaluate their tax processes, identify areas for improvement and leverage the most supportive technologies at the right time. A strategy can help a company spread out costs associated with investments in licensing and implementation of technology. And having a technology strategy in place can drive better and more efficient technology support for the tax function by deploying the company's resources more effectively. So our next polling question. Where do you see technology most playing, most playing a transformational role in your business? So we've selected there what we think are the, 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 the five most topical areas. So still moving around a bit, but the majority there with with uh, ERP being no surprise, being the, the, the core source of, of data, but even that's moving around quite a bit. So <laughs> a little bit premature on the uptake there. So, okay, so, we've, okay, so workflow and reporting. Okay, so, it's, so it's moving around. I, I, you know, I think it's fair to say those, those five areas, they're all interconnected and, and uh, entwined in, in, in many respects. Uh, interesting, though, there's a, a complete absence of, of document management there. So what is your role in this and how are you... And are you up for taking charge of the tax technology strategy to develop and execute on a fruitful tax technology strategy that needs to be a driving force from the tax and accounting team? And that is you. Your presence here today is proof that you are committed to the evolution of your tax and accounting function. You've already had a taste of what technology can deliver you through our suite of one source solutions. From the clients that we have worked with on developing their tax and accounting technology strategy, there is a clear role for you. 
to align your department's objectives to those of the business, to engage your IT department and stakeholders so that tax and accounting has a voice in enterprise-wide decision making, to recognise that a tax technology strategy is a fluid and ever-evolving one, adapting to your company's, uh, as your company's priorities change, to find better ways to reuse existing data to the, in the business to create efficiencies, to build better visibility of your function at a board level and to educate on the merits of an assurance approach with the tax authorities for compliance, to develop an open dialogue and transparency with, re with regulatory authorities, and to measure and report on the additional value added to the business off the back of realising greater efficiencies from your technological investments. So we're building the technology of tomorrow so that when your business is ready for the future, we're already there to help you and show you around. And you'll hear more about that and those plans in a few minutes. So I hope that you enjoyed today's program. I, as I said, I look forward to meeting many of you throughout the day. I do appreciate your time here and I appreciate your support of the Thomson Reuters tax and accounting business, both as our customers uh, and as our partners. So I would now like to hand you over to Lawrence Kittle, Managing Director of the EMEA Corporate Market. Thank you.